Wait, seriously? Who said that? I did. <laughs> Hi there. I'm your brain. Okay. You'd say you care about me, right? Of course. Then why are you Googling, do I have a concussion? Because I took a hit to the head today, and I think I might have one. But you're trying to self-diagnose using the internet, and that's really dumb. But hey, you've received a blow to your head, so at least you have an excuse. If you're using the internet to figure out if you have a concussion or not, don't. Go see a doctor. Concussions can be serious, and doctors are going to be a much more reliable source than Google or any other... Bing? You're... you're using Bing. What, was Ask Jeeves not giving you the answers you wanted? You really did hit your head hard. Look... A concussion isn't as simple as just a blow to the head. A lot goes on inside your brain during a concussion, which is what we're going to look at now. In your brain, information is passed around using axons. They're delicate fibers which transport electrical signals through your brain, sending valuable information like motor skills and telling your brain how to function. When you receive a blow to the head, it causes the brain to move around and shake. As your brain shakes, it causes axons to strip. When axons are injured, it interrupts the flow of electrical signals, slowing down communication with the brain. On top of this, broken axons re-release toxins into the brain, causing even more issues. Now let's dispel some myths you might have heard about concussions. Number one, helmets stop you from getting concussions. False. They're great for preventing skull fractures and severe traumatic brain injury, but no matter how nice the helmet, it's not going to stop the brain from smashing into your skull. Number two, every concussion is the same. False again. Concussions vary wildly simply because the part of your brain impacted can vary wildly. Different symptoms will result depending on where your brain is injured. Some result with a lack of balance or motor skill. Others can result in a spike of anxiety or trouble concentrating. Number three. And finally, the myth I believe everyone who's ever gotten a concussion ever has heard at least once is you can't let someone who has a concussion fall asleep for a set amount of time. This is so false that it can actually hurt you if you take it to heart. As long as a person isn't struggling to remain conscious, sleep is an integral part of recovering from a concussion. Which brings us to recovery. The best way to recover from any concussion is to get plenty of rest. You also want to avoid physically demanding activities, and activities that require sustained concentration. That means no prolonged amount of time looking at your phone, playing video games, or even too much reading. Remember, Rest for a concussion is lying down on the couch, not lying down on the couch and watching Netflix. <sighs> You're going to make me talk about it, aren't you? Fine. Symptoms. Ways you can tell you might have a concussion are persistent headache, trouble balancing, double vision, trouble concentrating, nausea, or vomiting. Ways you can tell someone else might have a concussion include memory loss, appearing dazed or stunned, loss of consciousness, confusion, changes in personality, behavior, or mood. Symptoms might not become readily apparent, but if they continue to worsen, they should be taken to the emergency room immediately. Remember, Google is not a doctor. A doctor is a doctor. If you are exhibiting any of these symptoms, go see one. Yes? Could having a five-minute face-to-face conversation with one's own brain be considered a symptom of a concussion? Well, it's definitely a hallucination, which does involve the brain. I have an idea. Let's go talk to a doctor about it. Sounds good. Uh, but first, let's call a friend to drive us. Good idea. 